Recurrent neural networks are the information processing architectures that we use to learn in processes that are not Markov, namely in processes where knowing the history of the process helps in learning. We will consider here the problem of predicting whether a particle will enter a forbidden region. We have already seen that when predicting the future of the trajectory is beneficial to know the whole past. We have also seen that the reason why this happens is because this process is not Markov. In turn, this is true because of physical inertia, which is just a way of saying that the direction and speed of movement matter if we're trying to predict the future path. If you need convincing, here's an example of a trajectory that enters into the forbidden area. At time four, the positions X4 observed for this new trajectory and for one of our old trajectories are the same. But one of the trajectories is on a collision course with the forbidden area and the other one is on a safe trajectory. We can see that this is true without looking at their futures if we compare their positions at time three. The important observation for us to make now is that the process is not Markov as described. But if we also have access to the velocities and accelerations of the particle, the system becomes Markov. Having access to those unobserved states would allow us to predict the next position of the particle based on the current state of the particle. Now made up not only of the position x of t, but also including the velocity v of t and the acceleration a of t. By the way, this depends a little on the model of your particle. It could be that you have to go deeper into the position derivatives to have a Markov model. You may need to have access to the jerk and the snap or even access to the crackle and the pop. But in any event, the important point is that all systems are Markov. This is true in a shallow intuitive sense and in a deep philosophical sense. The problem, however, is that we often lack enough information to observe the Markov structure. In this problem, we are observing positions because this is what we can measure directly, but we don't know the velocity or the acceleration not to mention the higher order derivative, derivatives if we need to go that route. The system is Markov, but on a state that remains hidden to the observer. This fact brings us to the introduction of hidden Markov models. We say that a stochastic process X of t follows a hidden Markov model if there exists another unobservable stochastic process Z of t that is Markov. And furthermore, the state ZT completely determines the probability distribution of the observed state X of T. Formally, the process Z of T is one whose probability distribution at time T plus one, given the entire trajectory of the process, is the same as its probability distribution when conditioning only on just the current value of the process. This just means that ZT is a regular Markov process. The new part of the definition is to add the condition that the probability distribution of the observed state x of t given the current value of the hidden state c of t is equal to the probability distribution of x of t given the entire history of the hidden process. Thus, we have that the hidden state z of t is a memoryless Markov stochastic process, and that the observed state x of t is conditionally independent. It depends only on the current value of the hidden state zt, not on the entire past trajectory of the hidden state. As before, we may have outputs of the process yt. These are conditionally independent when given the hidden state zt. Very importantly, this does not mean that they are conditionally independent when given the current observed state x of t. This is, ultimately, the reason why we can't have a sequence of learning problems, and we instead end up with the problem of learning from a sequence. Indeed, in hidden Markov models, learning is not equivalent to a sequence of learning problems. The hidden state ZT is a Markov process. Its probability distribution is a chain of conditional probabilities in which the state at time t plus one depends only on the value of the process at time t. Given the state ZT of the hidden process, the probability distribution of the observation YT is completely determined. We don't need to know the history of the process if we know ZT. The probability distribution of the observable state XT is also completely determined if we observe ZT. But this fact is not very important in this discussion. What matters most to us is that the observation yt is conditionally independent. But given that this is true, 
To predict the outputs of the stochastic process, it is enough for the AI to try to mimic the conditional distribution of yt given the hidden state zt. The AI could try to learn a mapping phi from zt to the predicted output y hat t. Implementing this map, however, requires access to the state zt. But this state is hidden, it is unobservable. We do not know the value that zt has taken. This is the reason why the process is hidden Markov, not plain Markov. What we know is the observable state xt, but this is not sufficient for us to neglect the history of the process. Recurrent neural networks are information processing architectures to bypass this issue. They utilize observations of the observable state xt to estimate the hidden state zt. And from this hidden state estimate, they estimate the process output yt. In order to extract information from the data sequence without running into dimensionality issues, a recurrent neural network makes use of two separate learning parameterizations. A function phi1 that maps the observed state x of t and the hidden state zt minus 1 into a hidden state update zt. Thus, at every time instant, the RNN updates its internal hidden state based on the received observation xt and on the previous value of the hidden state, zt minus 1. Observe that we are using zt to denote the internal state of the RNN. This state is not the same as the internal state of the hidden Markov process. It would be more accurate to use z hat t to denote the internal state of the RNN, but this complicates notation unnecessarily. The second component of the RNN is the learning parameterization phi 2, which maps the updated hidden state zt to a predicted output y hat t. This architecture receives the name recurrent because the hidden states are fed back as inputs for the next time step. This recurrence of the hidden state allows the RNN to encode past information it receives from the data points in so far in a manner that circumvents memory growth. By repeatedly updating the hidden state with each new data sample, the RNN creates an implicit mapping from the history of the process to the current hidden state without having to store and process all the samples it has seen so far. So far, we haven't said anything about the specifics of the parameterizations phi1 and phi2. They could be anything, but in a recurrent neural network, they are neural networks. More concretely, the AI for the hidden state update is a perceptron. The state xt is multiplied by a matrix A. The state zt minus 1 is multiplied by a matrix B. The results are added up and the sum is passed through a pointwise nonlinearity. The learnable parameters of an RNN are the entries of the matrices representing the linear combination of the data points A and of the hidden state B. Note that the number of learnable parameters does not depend on the time index T. That regularity prevents the number of learnable parameters from growing too large. And it also allows execution in sequences of variable length, which is another important property that RNNs have. For the output prediction AI phi2, we can use another perceptron. We multiply the hidden state ZT by a matrix C and pass the output through a pointwise nonlinearity. It is also possible to use a multilayered neural network for the output AI. The theme of this course is the exploitation of structure. RNNs exploit the structure of the sequence. On top of that, the observable state xt, the hidden state zt, and the observations yt can also have some structure that we can exploit. If they are graph signals, we can use graph filters in view of the arbitrary matrices a, b, and c. Introducing this extra structure leads to the introduction of graph recurrent neural networks. 